No Man's Sky. What is this guy? Can you touch it? This changes everything! What is a man? A, a miserable, miserable little pile, pile of secrets. secrets. But the game does have a man, and his name is Sean Murray, the founder of Hello Games, the man who played a part in Burnout Free and Black, created Joe Danger, and Man's Sky. 255 galaxies, 18 quintillion planets, 16, 16 times, times the detail, detail, and there is not a hint of chaos. chaos. This all changed when a man tweeted this. He does this before every update. One single emoji is enough to turn a deprived community into a frenzy. It is chaos in the streets. The community knew that something is coming, yet they cannot see what it is. But there is one man who doesn't like to beg and is bored of waiting. What he wants, he will make it. In his path lies destruction, insanity, and great change. This is the true story of how a mother ruined Sean Murray in seven days. I'm afraid that's not possible. Okay, let's back up just a little bit. It all started on August 10th, 2021, when No Man's Sky officially turned five years old. Hello Games commemorated the occasion by writing an article on the site. But this time, it was different. They have something else up their sleeve. No Man's Sky Frontiers, coming soon. This is enough to tease the fanbase into the same conundrum. Frontiers will be our 17th, and we're excited to bring it to you very soon. This one blog post started an enormous amount of hype, a hype train one may even call, and it was going strong in various Discord servers. People spamming the eye emoji, screaming hype at each other, reposting the same stale gif. They do this every single time leading up to an update, but this time it was different. A perfect storm sometimes starts with just a butterfly's flapping. This time, someone made a new meme. To ask for a trailer, they have made a trailer, pulled by Carl with Sean's face on it. It was harmless, a bit tongue-in-cheek, and most of all, simple. It was one of the memes ever, but it will also become a seed for the man who will leave his mark in No Man's Sky history. But who's this man? To answer that, we must dive into the No Man's Sky modding scene. No Man's Sky doesn't have the largest player base, and its modding community is even smaller. A relatively small group normally wouldn't get much recognition from the developers. One of the only moments we saw the modding community recognize is when the No Man's Sky alternate reality game Waking Titan said they were experimental. Therefore, modders are often left to their own devices. No restrictions, no help, and no interaction in general. Some people are in peace with this idea, and they make quality of life mods that makes the game better and considered mandatory to be installed. People like Gumsk, Jason Dude 17116, Bab School, Exo Solar, and LO2K. Some people like building and maintaining the essential tools for making the mods themselves. Figures like Monkey Man 192 or Bertro. Mistral, CM Kushner, Greg K. Weiss. But modding is a spectrum. There are and always will be some people who are absolutely bonkers. Winder TP is one of those people. Self proclaimed master of the Dookie 10, a firm lover of memes, he has manifested this love in his mods, like Getting Head, Hobo Town, Thomas and Friends Go on a Rampage, Intelligence Enhancer, Carboy. And this man has always had an obsession with Sean Murray. Just three months before a series of events, he tried to make Sean Murray's head. He didn't know how to 3D model, but that didn't stop him. He made a bold head with Character Creator Free, a program that can generate a face with a single front-facing picture. Done. But it didn't give his Sean a full head of hair. Winder will not be halted in his path. He used PiFu HD, 
an AI algorithm that takes a picture and generates a 3D model of the human shape. It doesn't look perfect, but sometimes the jank is the merit. He put them together, and Sean Murray is reborn in the form of a shitty 3D model. Winder put it onto the player character model, and now a god lives among its creations. The result? Every single real person you see in the game becomes Sean Murray. Done! Done! I was about to be redacted by a group of Sean Murrays. Done! Oh, look at that! I love it! Everyone's head is Sean Murray's head. <laughs> <laughs> Some gaming sites noticed it. Sean too. He was shook. What he didn't know is that he wouldn't be seeing the last of it. It would only take three months. The Romer Exocraft. This image is now all over different No Man's Sky Discord servers. One of them is the Galactic Hub, the oldest civilization in No Man's Sky, and one of the biggest. The image pops up in the Hype Room channel. And this is when it was seen by Winder. Winder is a kid basher. It is a practice whereby a new scale model is created by taking pieces out of kids. It is then put onto other projects or another kit. A head and a car. Two pieces from two kids shall now collide. So Winder opened Blender, the program of choice for No Man's Sky modding, imported the Roamer Exocraft from the game using the NMSDK plugin created by Monkey Man, and then put the head into its rightful place. And then he tweeted it. He posted it on Reddit too, because the community is by far most active over there. The mods swiftly removed it. But that matters very little. He has put the meme into the game. Sean Murray is a no man's guy once more. And now he has worn. He would make one more thing into Sean Murray. Every single day the update is not released. It has begun. Oh fuck, what? No Man's Sky is well known for its procedural generation. Placing parts down on a galactic level based on seeds, algorithms, and rules. The code basically mutates and changes that. Kind of like if you imagine an MMO and you take your character and you can slide all the different sliders. This is brilliant because the developers don't need to handcraft every single variation, just every single part. A side effect of this though is that everything is generated on the fly. And when things change drastically and suddenly, the game will need some time to generate everything all over again. Like when you're teleporting to another star system. The loading screen is cleverly covered up by warping animation. It means that every time someone goes to another system, they will have to stare at this screen. If you want someone to immediately see what you've done to the game, it's free real estate. So Winder decided to replace every texture he could in teleporters. The portal model looks simple on the surface, but when you look deeper into it, you realize that it is like an onion. It has layers upon layers of things to change in order to make it become Sean Murray. To change a texture, Winder has to start digging right from the top, a model that is stored in a scene file. There are around 60 pieces of this thing meshes and each piece has its own material parameter file. Only in there will you find a path to the textures that are being used. Thankfully, the textures are just DDS files in a specific but common codec. You just need to reroute each and every single texture file after he's done. Now you're thinking with Sean. 
When you arrive at a teleporter, you will now see a pool of Twister Shorns. And when you teleport, This may look trippy, but when you look closely, you will see that the walls of the tunnel are all Sean's face. But the update still hasn't come out. That means being inside Sean is clearly not enough. Winter must continue putting more Sean's into the game. In the future, entertainment will be randomly generated. Randomly generated? Breaking Bad 3D Soul Mike Ehrmantraut Expecting the unexpected This is the current state of humor we are in But who's to judge the right from wrong? Instead, I want to show you random humor Before it was dank I'm <laughs> wearing <laughs> Moleto. That's what it's called. No, seriously, it says so right on the wiki. Nonsensical humor, popularized in the late 1980s and throughout the 90s. This type of Hong Kong cinema captured South Asia. The reason I'm telling you all this is because Winder grew up in that environment where every Sunday there is bound to be a Stephen Chow film or Andy Lau best shit insane random bullcrap injected directly into his brain. And years later, the stars has finally come into alignment in no man's sky. Winder likes saying eating spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks. And for day three, that particular spaghetti has landed on to Luigi. The blob, man's best friend, round, worry-free, euphoric, a simple representation of the perfect person. Not a single thought in his two virtual brain cells. It just hops, looks up, and screams on top of his lungs. The blob is such a silly little guy. It has captured the community's collective love. It became a flare icon. It has a planet named after it. It has inspired a religion. It has even gone full circle. It became a decal and a featured animal in a terrarium decoration in the game. Everybody loves Blob. Blob is love. Blob is life. I love the Blob. Blob is a blank canvas begging to be painted on. And now, the worst thing aside from Rule 34. We can show that. No, we can't. What happened to Blob? Sean Murray's face. Animation is hard. Animated models work differently than things like a car where everything is rigid and doesn't really move on their own. In normal 3D programs, there are these things called bones to make a rig out of a model to animate it. Simple enough to understand. Human body has bones. Human body moves according to where bones don't bend. But imagine if the human body also move around where the bones meet. That's where No Man's Sky comes in, with its joints. This is a normal T-posing humanoid in Blender. And this is a normal A-posing humanoid in No Man's Sky Model Viewer. To make a thing animate according to the animation, Winder has to put the model at the precise joint that is manipulated in the right way. There are about 40 joints in the blob model, and finding the right joint by testing them one by one will surely take hours. Luckily, unlike a lot of meshes in the models, the animation rigs in No Man's Sky is actually quite well structured and named, and when you have the right tools, it gets exponentially easier to pinpoint the right place to drop things in. Bingo. Winter has now desecrated the community's favorite animal. Now Blob is Sean. You can pet the Sean, ride the Sean, see the Sean bounce around all day long. He had the people's curiosity with the car, but now he has their attention. Prominent figures in the community started seeing them. But it is not enough. Sean Murray is still only tweeting that damned emoji instead of releasing the update. But perhaps...
<laughs> Perhaps Hello Games finally understood. They understood that chaos is catching up with them, and they must fight this threat with speed, great vengeance, and furious anger. There is another meme in the community with hyping up releases. This is the GIF emo. Not GIF like GIF, GIF like GIF. People like to spam this emo and the word GIF so the Hello Games will eventually give them the update. Unfortunately, that hasn't happened today. And so, Winda will keep on giving until Sean does. Either the artist will be destroyed in their attempt to prove to the world that there are other facets to their creativity, or they succumb willingly and spend the rest of their lives as a travelling fruit show. Working under stress can be difficult, but working under the expectations of recreating a banger is much, much worse. You either create a one-hit wonder and fuck off forever as a legend, or you try to replicate the success and fail miserably. Only rarely, when the stars align twice in a row, do you get bangers after bangers. After yesterday's model replacement, Windows set out to make another texture replacement. Variety is the spice of life after all, but what should he shonify? What is manageable yet weird enough to be replaced after the teleporter? Update 1.75 No Man's Sky Visions Released on November 22nd, 2018. Discover a more varied, more diverse universe. New anomalous planet biomes create a weirder, more diverse universe to explore. This biome is called the Wire Cell Biome, where the surface is splattered with countless pieces of distorted screens. And even though it looks like the screen's moving, none of them are actually videos. They are just plain textures that scrolls. So it should be easy, and it should look great, right? Windows started working on making the texture. If the original YSL texture is just a mess, why not make a replacement a mess too? An absolute mosaic of Sean Murray will look chaotic. Now every single screen should be covered in Sean. It'll be like that scene in Matrix Reloaded, and it will be iconic. At least that's what Winter thought. It had a lot less attention than yesterday. The phases are too small. It was way too claustrophobic. Twitter compression didn't help. No one can even hope to see a single face clearly. And the reality is, with anything on Twitter, everyone's probably watching it on a small phone screen. And no one likes looking at small things in an already small form factor. Size, perhaps, does matter in this instance. It's not necessarily a big problem because it's after all just a meme. And like a lot of things, the meme making journey is the most meaningful part. Winder may just keep doing things for his own enjoyment and his small community of martyrs. But something doesn't add up. Something doesn't track. Sean Murray is supposed to be ruined at the end of the week. What could have happened in the next three days that so rapidly destroyed the man's sanity? <laughs> A YouTube video should grab the attention of the viewer in the first 15 seconds, 5 even, if you can manage that. Things that are being shown on screen should be flashy, epic, immediately recognizable. And for the most part, it's the same with Twitter and modding. Winder has learned an important lesson from yesterday, and Hello Games still has not released the update yet, which means there is no point in stopping. Sometimes, being new doesn't automatically mean being good. Making something that no one had asked for can be stupid, because they never needed it in the first place. Trial and error has taught us that maybe it's okay to go back to the things that have worked previously. Everybody loves Blob. Blob is love, Blob is life. But now, he has their attention. So Winda went back to the comments.
Floaters. Floaters are a strange bunch of creatures. They fly but have no wings, and they further differentiate from normal winged creatures by not being tiny and not being in a herd big enough to blend into each other. Not claustrophobic and not too small. This is looking up to be a great candidate already, but there is still something special about floaters. One of them farts a lot. Practically a continuous stream of smoke comes out of his ass. Fart jokes are funny. Fecal funny even. is the spark that sets a methan fire. The Sean face cherry on top of the Sean cake is perfect. The floaters have eight variants, and winter only had one day. No Man's Sky is a strange game. In the games of an hour, it uses its own engine. We wrote our own engine. We wrote our own engine for Joe Danger. I've always written engines, so we sort of didn't think about it that much. And unlike the textures that are commonly used and easily replaceable, like Winder did with the portal, it comes with a very unique way to store its data. Everything is in a custom binary file format called mbin, which mothers convert to their own form of human-readable markup language called EXML. This doesn't just include the weird data files that control how the world is generated. The car and Sean's head, they are mbin models. Their behavior files, also mbins. Most of the files this game uses are very custom and very different to mod than some Bethesda Skyrim titles, and it only makes putting everything together in one day so much more complicated. Perhaps it is time to choose. But there is one thing I seem to have glossed over. No Man's Sky originally came out in 2016, six entire years ago, and Winder was one of the players right at the beginning. He has seen the game grow and has been growing with it. For a man his age, it is a considerable amount of time. He released his first mod back in 2017. What I'm trying to get to here is that Winder is not a new modder in the community. He has been modding for four whole years in 2021. Just a year behind the giants in the community like Monkey Man, the Fisher 86, and Master Sergeant Shooter Person. At this point in time, he has since become an expert in model manipulation and kit bashing in the No Man's Sky modding scene. What he wants, he doesn't have to choose. He will make it. And just like that, he has done it within a day. With this, the player has become Sean Murray, riding Sean Murray, who's farting clouds of Sean Murray from this little float tussie. Nice. The day's done, a request fulfilled, and the people are again shook. And seeing that the No Man's Sky update is still not released, and the people still wanting more, he asked a question. After all this, in front of the computer he said, thinking this will all just be another uneventful day, but he couldn't be more wrong. Hello everyone, Jay Tholen here. Jay Tholen, creator of Hypnospace Outlaw, Dream Settler, and Slayer's X Terminal Aftermath Vengeance of the Slayer, retweeted the video. No one knows how he came across this niche video with only 100 or so likes, but the update does, in his own words, consume his life during that twilight phase between announcement and release. Perhaps it's a miraculous coincidence of endless hype scrolling. Nevertheless, this one retweet is a spark that will start a chain reaction, making this methane fire to eventually blow sky high. You're seeing this right. No surrender. Sean himself has recognized Winder. And the best of all, 
He has accepted this battle. He has shown Windows' work to the world. He will not give up. He will not release the update yet, even with himself being the butt of the joke. Now Winder has a real purpose, to defeat Sean Murray. Sean still hasn't given, so Winder will, and he will keep giving more. The media started picking the story up. The first one, unsurprisingly, is Kotaku. They are so serious that they didn't even write a clickbait title. But the most important place, one true battleground that mattered, is Reddit. Remember how the first post was deleted after getting attention? Well, someone posted the tweet on the subreddit this time. Remove this, you filthy casuals. At the end, maybe it's the stupidest things that would get the people's attention. Perhaps the fecal really is funny. Winder started small, from a joke that literally took 20 minutes to make, from being a picture on Twitter, from being deleted off Reddit. No one would ever have thought this already overused, dead and necromanced meme would gain any traction. Certainly not Winder, certainly not to this scale. But today, after Sean has given attention to the tweet, all eyes are finally on him. What possibly can he make to surpass fart jokes? What can he do so he can achieve his goal to attack and dethrone God himself? We've all heard of the definition of insanity. It's doing the exact same fucking things over and over again and expecting shit to change. Winder is insane. We have already seen from the previous days that replacing textures is probably not as popular, as epic, or as eye-catching as when he replaced blobs and fathers. Surely he wouldn't do it again. He decided to do it again. The wire cell biome was underwhelming, but that wasn't necessarily because the action of replacing texture is bad. The screens were too small, it was too hard to see, they were claustrophobic, sure. But what if... What if we just get really close to it? Cinematography is the art and technology of motion picture photography. It involves such techniques as the general composition of a scene, the camera angle and movements. It is a crucial part of the visual medium. It can even decide the focus of an entire scene. Maybe it doesn't matter if everything is claustrophobic. Perhaps the textures were never bad. They just needed to be the focus. So over the span of a single day, Winder has replaced a massive amount of textures of shrubs and flowers, over 150 DDS textures and material config files. In one fell swoop, Winder has spread all over the place the Sean Murray. He has every blade of grass, leaf and flower. Nature is God, and God is nature, and He is the entire world. But there is one more thing. Day 6, the world. Winder asked the people yesterday if they want to see the world shornified. Out of over 100 people, over 85% said yes. And Winder is not about to chicken out a promise. But here comes the important question. What is the world? A tarot card? A Jojo reference? A galaxy? What are the boundaries of your world? Does it only extend to the boundaries of your perception? Existence precedes essence. To an existentialist, the world is simply a reflection of their mind. Sean Murray and Hello Games has created entire worlds in No Man's Sky. It is, for all intents and purposes, reflections of their own essence, and the world should reflect themselves back to them. But it's becoming the floor enough. Is life itself the only thing we see ourselves in? 
Perhaps there is something more foundational, more solid. What if Sean can see himself every step of the way, regardless of life? What if the very ground we step on is an endless sea of Sean's grinning face? That's right, in his insanity and with the help of a fellow modern named R, Winder has replaced the floor with Sean's face. Eighteen ground tiling textures, every single floor in the blue channel has been individually replaced. Every single square unit, every bit of incline, flat, peak, is Sean Murray looking at you, gazing directly into your soul. Sean Murray is watching you. Every planet you see, every system you reach is now truly Sean's domain. Every large spheroid orb in space has become an aggregation of Sean's. There is no escape. Where you lay your head is Sean. And with better cinematography, the focus is clear. Down to the smallest blade of grass, up to the largest planet surfaces, are all shown now. The issue with the mistake made two days prior, it turns out, is not that Winter was trying too hard, it was him not trying hard enough. And with a new tweet, he has once again captured the people's attention. On Twitter, on Reddit, in the press again. But still, none of this truly matters. After all, these people are simply bystanders, audiences, in a fierce battle between Winder and his target, Sean Murray, God himself. Sean has spoken clearly. He will not negotiate, even with himself blown to pieces, corrupting every single piece of land, grass, and flower. He will not back down. But that doesn't mean he's not desperate, because this is not the only tweet. Some of the textures aren't used in game. It is true. Some of these textures are unused, pre-release assets. But it doesn't diminish Windows' achievement of the impossible goal for all gamers: touching grass. It didn't matter if he's only going to show a couple pieces in his review. He caught himself in 720p, recording the entire process of putting Sean Murray's head on the grass texture, morphing, twisting. Bopping his face and shaping him in the individual blades of grass. What? Being used in game is not the point. The people will only see what the camera shows them. It is about sending a message. It is a swarm of shawns ravaging the battlefield, cornering their opponent. And apparently, that is what Sean fought too. The net is closing, indeed. Only the question is, for whom? <laughs> Winda is feeling it. Today is August thirty-first, Tuesday. Throughout the years, No Man's Sky has had twenty major updates. And a small majority of the recent ones were released on a Wednesday, September first, twenty twenty-one. It's a Wednesday. It all started on August tenth, twenty twenty-one, when No Man's Sky officially turned five years old. It has been nearly three weeks since Hello Games teased Frontiers, and nearly a week <laughs> since Sean Murray tweeted the fated emoji. The combination of the two returns a very obvious conclusion: the hype is at its maximum now, and so the update must release very soon. And since tomorrow is a Wednesday, this may be Winter's final day to defeat God. <laughs> 
Winder has been replacing things with Sean's face for six days now, and his target has always been Sean himself. But why hasn't Sean been defeated? Is Winder simply punching at a wall that can be broken? Maybe Sean really is just a powerful and almighty guard who is impossible <laughs> to reach. Is it finally time to admit defeat? <laughs> the net is finally closing in on Winder, unless he can deal a decisive blow. And if this is truly his last chance, he best throw everything he's got. But what is everything? Winter has already transformed the entire world. Surely there can't be anything more epic. We all create the illusions which we call everything through our perceptions, and earthly beings would only inhibit earthly things. This is the world we live in, and this is the only world we can change, right? Wrong. No man's sky. What is the sky? Can you touch it? What if we can? Perhaps there is something higher. Maybe it's finally time to reach, reach for, for the, the sky. sky. The Social Contract, written in 1762 by Jean-Jacques Rousseau, is one of the more important political writings in the modern era. It even helped bringing about a new political landscape. Rousseau argued against the idea of the fine right of kings and for the people being the sovereign of a nation. Winter cannot admit defeat right now. The future is already shown to us, the conclusion already draws near. Kings, gods, Sean, he is simply one man, because he must be, and men are created equal. The sovereign being formed wholly of the individuals who compose it, neither has nor can have any interest contrary to theirs and standing at this crossroad, he realized maybe he has simply been punching the wrong tree. Maybe the people aren't simply bystanders. If we are truly equal on the battleground of cloud, then surely to gain the people's power will overcome the strength of one man. To attack and dethrone God has never been facing God directly. Rather, it is an effort to give power back to the people. We all create the illusions which we call everything through our perceptions. And luckily, Winder doesn't need to go any further to see everyone's illusions. It has already been laid out before him, all throughout the week, under every tweet, every reddit post, people have been cheering him on. What's more, they have been giving him suggestions of what they want to see Seanify. All he has to do is to follow through and fulfill them. And that's exactly what he did. Winder has done it. Every single user request he could fit in, he has made it within one single day. He has offered himself as the sword and the people wielded it with rejoice. However, up until now, everything he has replaced are still simply earthly beings, creatures, objects, the earth itself. Nothing has broken the final boundary. No man's sky, the final frontier, a place that belongs to no one, the void itself. There is but one thing, one place that hasn't been corrupted by capitalism. The space anomaly, the nexus, the final weapon. Winder has touched the Romer, the Einstein Rosenbridge, the sacred creatures, the glitch in the matrix, the smelly buttholes. He touched grass. Winder has even touched himself. And now he has finally touched the sky. He touched everything he could. And at the end, he touched the hearts of the people. Winter has gathered thousands of people in amazement from all over the world. 
each giving a little bit of energy. A butterfly's wing flap has finally led to the perfect storm. <laughs> and here we are. Sean is defeated, and in his own words, ruined. Winter has won. He achieved the impossible. In seven days, he has changed the face of No Man's Sky, garnered attention that he never thought he would. And at the end, it was all worth it. He did it for the people. He did it for Sean. He did it for himself. He felt alive. No Man's Sky's 17th major update, 3.6 Frontiers, released on September 1st, 2021. It was another major success for Halo Games. A new settlement system, hundreds of new base objects, stunning update officials, it was everything the average player could ask for. And when everything is said and done, Sean looked back and said, This one had me good. Artificious Kylie, Ark, Craftsman of the Sky. It is a long faded dream of a community, a broken attempt to build a civilization in No Man's Sky. It followed the likes of other big time civilizations like the Galactic Hub, the Amino Hub, and the AGT. It embeds the core philosophy of this No Man's Sky community. They see the world of Atlas less than a path or a world to conform in, but a canvas which they can change, create, and demolish. When the martyrs see past this world of Atlas, they become part of Kylus. And just like the modern community, it was too small to maintain itself. It didn't go away with a great decimating war. It died without a whimper, going inactive only after a year. But there is one person who believed in the Ark after all these years, Winder TP. The eternal struggle between martyrs and the fabled updates have all been codified into the lore of Ark, just as it was written. They have such a knowledge of the multiverse that they can even keep the entities they cared about from the update. And so it is. Frontiers was released, but Wunder wasn't quite done just yet. He still has some fight left in him. To gain clout on Twitter, to defeat Sean in the court of public opinion is not enough. He must make it possible for the average player to join him in the eternal fight against God and his updates. Such is the way of the Ark. But how is he going to do that? Well, Winder has a trick up his sleeve. What if he can make the players fight Sean right in the game itself? What if there is such a creature that can make players recoil in fear? and activate their fight or flight response. Enter Biological Horus. Added in July 2018 as part of the next update, there are vicious territorial creatures that would burrow out of the ground when one dare to harvest their eggs. They are fast, high damage, and don't give a fuck. I'm fearsome and self sure, but it is not enough. Winda has become so powerful now, he knows that he can do so much. He can even influence the Atlas to create life. These Sean and Logical Horrors have now replaced the original glowing eyes and sharp fangs with Sean's undying gaze. It may look less alien, sure, but how can we fret over a few eggs when we're making the mother of all Seanless? And not only that, the original biological horror warning sign now displays a very, very angry Sean. There is only one issue. Biological horrors are rare. They can only be encountered around dead and infected worlds. And those planets only has around 5-7% chance to appear. This hardly can do for war. However, there is one silver lining. Another type of enemy. Something far more terrifying. For true constant struggle, eternal battle, 
immortal war, there is only one candidate. Sentinels, space robot cops. They are the highest authority, the furniture of law enforcement. There is no other power more suitable for the players to fight. But I did say that it should be something far more terrifying. To cause maximum emotional damage, they must become another thing. What in oblivion is that? Sentries, what do you see? It's in the car. Thomas the Tank Engine, child's best friend, Eldritch Horror, public menace. It has long since the days of Skyrim, Thomas became a tradition to be martyred in place of horrifying presences. Reserved for the most deranged martyrs and users, it is not for the faint of heart to use, let alone to make. But Winter was not a fucking coward. On the 10th of May 2019, Beautiful Sentinels was released. It was a manifestation of skill, showing just how much Winter can do with replacing models, from originally having Thomas just floating around, to eventually putting individual limbs, floating books orbiting the train, and kit bashing an entire mech from multiple models. It was a journey to show just how much a person can learn through time and practice. And now there is another component Winter must add. You have seen Mechanical Thomas, but now you have seen everything. Seanmas the Tank Engine, the ultimate horror with feet. And now the players can finally shoot whatever they desire and go into battle whenever with Sean. It is a picture to be desired, but Winter was not satisfied. There is yet one more thing in the picture that needs to become better. Gun is a western themed action adventure video game developed by Neversoft and published by Activision for Microsoft Windows, PlayStation 2, Xbox, GameCube, and Xbox 360 as a launch title in 2005. Gun is also the topic at hand here. Winder is going to replace it with Sean. The Multi 2 is a procedurally generated part and comes in various shapes and sizes. Now, the finita size doesn't really matter here. Because if he's going to replace it, he's going to make one that is bigger, stronger, and utterly covered in Sean's. And not just one Sean. Winder has amalgamated seven Sean's, each representing a seal that brings about the apocalypse, for it will bring forth annihilation to everything that comes in its path. What's more, the grenades, the lasers, the muscle flash, the individual bullets are now imbued of the power of Sean. By Winder's hands, it has become the ultimate weapon. Now the floating Sean's will taste his own fist thrusting into themselves. Finally, it's here, the perfect battlefield. A picture of a Sean normally wearing a Shauna on his shoulder fighting Shauntanos, shooting Sean munition with a Sean gun, blasting Mushon Flash on the... Shlor? The complete destruction of aesthetics and the arts. A true data on display. It didn't receive much attention, but it really doesn't matter. The update was already released. He just likes it. And at the end, that's what modding is all about. Making something you like, doing things that makes you happy. And today, Winter had joy. Sean Sean's Sean, the mod, was released on September 3rd, 2021. It didn't make much of a noise, other than having another PC Gamer article written about it. He kept working on replacing a little bit more stuff as time went on. Most of them are either fixes or suggestions, but they were fun little additions, nothing too major. Seven and a half days, all started with a meme from three months before. 
a culmination of five years of modding. He has achieved the impossible. He memed his way to the front page of the community. He has brought the modding scene to the world's attention. And now his duty is over. And people can live among a world of Sean's, knowing we have achieved peace. Thank you all for watching, and may Sean be forever with you. Also, yes, this video is intellectual masturbation. Hello there. Win the TP in his natural habitat. This video has been a year in the making, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see the original 7 Days of Sean videos, I've linked the playlist in the pinned comment below so you can go check them out. I have a Twitch channel where I stream occasionally, so if you like watching Asian men play games badly, feel free. I'd like to thank the No Man's Sky modding Discord, Galactic Hub Discord, and the Galactic Hub Exobiology Core for helping with the extra research and fact checking. I'd also love to thank all of my supporters on Kofi who graciously bought me extremely fake Sean Murray NFTs. Para, Small Gumball, Size, and finally, Corpse. Thank you all for having faith in me. This channel is not monetized, so if you want to help this shit poster out, you can buy me a Sean NFT as well at call-feed.com slash windertp. Comment down below if you want more No Man's Sky stories like this. Links to everything I mentioned will be in the description. Thanks again for watching 